All right, what is going on guys? Casting with you guys with a brand new video guys and in today's video is going to be me showing you guys Finally how to make your own drop shipping store on WordPress I made this exact video series for Shopify But as you guys know, I don't use Shopify anymore as their platform is actually trash and they're banning accounts left and right So to combat that we're moving to WordPress if you guys want to join an e-commerce community My free discord chat is in the link in the description down below pretty much you guys can ask any question in there And I'll try to answer it and if I can't answer it somebody else will if you guys do like this video Please drop a like on it It did take me a long time to make and also subscribe to the channel if you guys are new it really does help me out And yeah, let's get right into the video so I can show you guys how to make your own dropshipping store on WordPress First thing you guys want to do you want to buy a domain and you're gonna do it off this website right here it's called namecheap.com go ahead and type in whatever the name you want it to be buy that domain and then once you buy it you're gonna go up here to the top right go to accounts and you're gonna go and go to apps on the left hand side right here and then select this green squid that says easy WP that's gonna take you to this screen right here what you're gonna do from here is you're gonna go to the top right and you're gonna hit new website and then from here select the plan you can select the first plan and then you're gonna uh, on the domain drop down right here what you're gonna do is you're gonna select that domain that you just purchased off of Namecheap and then follow the installation process and when you're done you can go back to the dashboard that we were at earlier and then your website should be right here so what you're gonna do is you're gonna select that website and you're just gonna go here and click WP admin what you guys are gonna do now is this is your WordPress admin so your WordPress admin is kind of like your Shopify admin if you guys ever made a Shopify store pretty much everything is going to be right here the first thing that we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and upload our theme so first thing is we're gonna go to appearance and then we're going to go to themes and then we're gonna hit add new you guys can use any of these but I'm gonna give you guys a theme it's actually like a hundred dollars I think but um, I'll give it to you guys for free the link will be in the description down below um, all you got to do is download that zip file and then you're just gonna drag it onto where it says choose file and then you're gonna hit install now after you hit install now make sure to hit activate as well so once you guys have activated this go to the themes page once you install the theme and you've activated it, now it's time to go ahead and make the site. What we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and add the products that we're going to be selling on our store to our store. So I have the two products right here that I'm going to go ahead and be selling. Um, so now once you have your AliExpress links, we're going to go ahead and save the pictures from AliExpress so we can upload them into our WordPress store. The easiest way to do this is just to select a picture of the variant of the product, right click it, and then hit inspect. And what you're going to do is now that that's selected, you're just going to go to this link right here double click it copy it put it into your browser and then search if you guys got that product you can just go ahead and screenshot it like this I'm gonna go ahead and save this image do that to all of the other variations of that product and if you notice every time I select a new product this link changes so if I clicked on this one it's gonna be for that picture so it's the same process I'm not gonna show you guys again so I'm just gonna go ahead and save all these images and I'll get back to you guys once I have all the images saved now we got our pictures what we're gonna do first is before we add the products we have to add a plugin this is plugin is gonna be called WooCommerce WooCommerce is kind of like the e-commerce platform of WordPress it's gonna turn your WordPress store into a e-commerce store essentially to do this you're gonna go right here to plugins and you're gonna hit add new and we're gonna go ahead in this search plugins bar right here we're gonna go type in WordPress. Or I'm sorry, we're gonna type in we're gonna type in WooCommerce. We just type it out. WooCommerce. Right there. And right here, you're gonna hit install now. This is gonna install. So once that's done installing, you're gonna hit activate plugin right here. And then it's gonna activate, and we're gonna go, we're gonna be able to add products on this left hand side right here. And then right here, we're going to go ahead and see where it says, welcome to WooCommerce. We're almost ready to start selling. Run the setup wizard. Yes, we're going to want to run that setup wizard. And then right here, it's going to ask you all this information. Um, I'll go through it with you guys. I'm going to have to blur out some stuff. Right here, you guys can just say, I plan to sell physical products only. Um, and no, you don't want to select that. And then just hit let's go. Bing, no, we don't need to do these right now. We'll set this stuff up later. So we're gonna head and hit continue. You guys can unselect MailChimp. We're not gonna, I don't use MailChimp, but you guys use it, you can go ahead and use it. Go ahead and continue with Jetpack. It kind of lets us see like our store stats, monitor stuff, add promotions, that sort of thing. So it's gonna take us to this screen right here. We're gonna need to make a Jetpack account right now. 
Um, if you guys don't have one, you hit create new account, but I already have one, so I'm gonna sign into mine. So once you guys connected Jetpack, we're ready to go. So I'm gonna hit visit my dashboard right here. Boom, we are back and added. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. So as you guys see now, right here on the left-hand side, we're gonna be able to add a product to our store. So I'm just gonna go to products, add new. So once I'm on this screen, I'm gonna be able to name my products. Now I'm going after like that branded store slash niche store kind of feel. I'm not doing a general store for this store. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to have to name my products a little bit differently. I'm gonna to have to give them some characteristics, kind of give them a name, you know, just saying, you know, men's sunglasses, black, you know, it doesn't give people a connection, right? They don't really, feel like they want to buy it. I'm going to name my products like men's sunglasses, black, you know, that's like a really generic name. You want to do something like another brand like Movement Watches does, you know, they name their products, they give each product a characteristic. So people are able to justify this as a $70 product, right? If they go here and they just see black men's sunglasses, right? They don't really feel like that's worth $70. But you know, the Aereo sunglasses, you know, that have really nice pictures and have a good amount of reviews is worth $90. I ahead and typed a little bit of a description right here. So engineered for optimal balance, our signature sunglasses are crafted with exceptional quality, performance, and comfort. So a couple things to take away from running your descriptions is the kind of words you want to be using, right? I didn't say made made for optimal balance, right? I said engineered, right? It gives it a little bit more of a high class sort of feel to it when people are reading it. You know, engineered for optimal balance, right? Um, signature, you know, signature makes it seem it's a long-term brand. It's like a long-term line of sunglasses that you're selling. It's not just sunglasses, it's the signature sunglasses. Um, they're crafted, you know, they're not made, they're crafted, handcrafted. Now that I got the description done, I'm gonna go ahead down here to the pricing section and let me explain my pricing real quick for you guys. So essentially how I'm gonna be pricing my products and how I usually price my products is I like to 3X whatever the amount of this product is. So this product right now is at about $10. So three times of whatever 10 is, right, whatever the product is, my product is gonna be $30 now. I like to also like increase that by five bucks usually because you never know how much it is going to be caught or how much it's going to cost for your product to get a sale on Facebook. Usually for something under like 50 bucks, it's going to be like 10, 20 bucks, really depending on what it is. It's like over a hundred bucks, you know, maybe even be 50 bucks. So you want to make sure that you're three Xing minimum this product. So I'm actually going to make it $37.95 for this product. Now that's kind of like a random price, but I actually do like those random prices a lot more. So what I'm going to do here, my price is going to be 37.99 and then the regular price is going to be the regular price is actually going to be $80 flat. So $80 flat and then 37 point, you know, we'll just make it 39.99 there. That product is at about half off right now. Um, we're going to make this not taxable and the tax class is a zero rate. We have our title, we have our description, and we also have our pricing set. So one more thing we're going to want to do is go ahead right here, and then we're going to add our images. So I already added a couple, but I'm going to go add other ones. First one I'm going to add is going to be the front image, which is going to be the product image, and that's going to be the one straight up of the sunglasses. So let that load in, set the product image, and then the gallery is going to be the additional pictures of that product. So right here, I'm going to add this one. And then I'm going to hit add to gallery once that is uploaded. Add to gallery. Cool. So now we got our images added. Um, we have the categories added as well right here. We have the title, description, and the pricing. All I'm going to do now is hit update. And then it should go ahead and update. And you guys can go ahead right here and view the link in a new tab. I'll show you the live product. So this is it right here. Um, this is the secondary image. And we're going to edit this page right now to change up a couple of the things. But that's gonna be pretty much it for adding the product to your guys' store. So one thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to add multiple variations to a product since it is a little bit different than, you know, Shopify or another platform. So let's go ahead right here, go back to all products. And then what we're gonna do is actually, we're gonna go right here and duplicate this product. So this is just an example of how to add a product with multiple different variations. So maybe you have, you guys are doing clothing, you wanna add different sizes to the clothing. So now you're on here, what you wanna do is go to product data and you wanna go to variable product now. What you wanna do now is right here on the left hand side, right click attributes, open that into a new tab. And then right here, this is going to be 
um, what they're going to be selecting right here, what variation they're going to be selecting. So maybe you guys want to do like a different sort of, you know, color of a product. You would add an attribute for color. Maybe you want to do size, whatever, add the attribute. And then once you add those attributes, you just want to go right here and hit configure those terms. So once you guys hit configure terms, what this is going to be is adding the variations under that product. So maybe the colors that we have are black, you know, white, and then blue, whatever, blue. And we want to do the same thing for the sizes, you know, small, you know, maybe medium, for small, you know, medium, large, whatever. So now once you guys have added those attributes, what you're gonna to wanna to do now is just go ahead and refresh that product that you guys duplicated, and then go here again and hit variable product. Oops, I closed it. And then you wanna to go to attributes, and then hit whatever attribute that you want added for that product. I wanna add color, I'm gonna hit add, and then now I'm just gonna select this little box that says use for variations, and I'm gonna select all the attributes that I want added for this product. So maybe black, white, blue, and then save attributes. So now our attributes saved. And then what you're gonna do now is you're gonna go to variations right here. You're gonna hit this little drop down menu and hit create variations from all products or from I'm sorry, create variations from all attributes. Hit go, hit okay. And I got my variations added. So what you guys want to do is for each variation, you're gonna to have to set its own individual pricing. You're also gonna to want to select the image that shows up when they select that variation. So for the black one, say, you know, this is the black, whatever. Um, this is just an example, right? So the, these pictures are all gonna be kind of similar. So once you do that, you know, you're gonna put your price, you know, I think we said it was $80. And then our sale price is $39.99. And then just close this. And you guys will wanna do this for all the variations you add. Now, once that's done, I'm just gonna hit save changes. And then once that is saved, you can go ahead and publish your product, publish. And then once that's done loading, right here open that link into a new tab and you'll see right here color you can choose the option and then once you select that variation it'll go to the picture that you selected for that variation that's how you add products um, i'm just going to go ahead and add the rest of the products to my store i have about six more products to add so how you guys can do this easily is just go to the product you just made select duplicate right there and it'll take you to this screen and all you guys got to do now is just change the pictures for that product change the title um, and then you know change the description if necessary change that and then I'm gonna go down here and then remove that picture set a new picture to use so I already used this one and I already used this one I'm gonna go ahead and add those new pictures now for this new product that I'm adding set that and then add the other picture as well to the gallery that's good nothing else changes all we're going to do is hit publish and then here we have another product added to the store so this is the exact same description the exact same pricing except we just changed the name obviously and added the new pictures so i'm going to go ahead and add the rest of the products to the store i'm not going to show that to you guys this is going to be a waste of time i just showed you how to add two products so i'm going to add the rest of the products to the store and i will be back okay so i just added the last product to the store so now if we go to all products oops there we go yeah all products we'll be able to see all the products that we've added to our store so now what we're going to do guys is we've added all our products so we want to edit the pages of the store so first thing we have to import some of the demo content that comes with this theme so what you guys want to do is you want to go to appearance and you're going to go to themes and then we're going to select the theme that we uploaded earlier go to theme setup and then hit let's go so this is all fine all this can be added we're going to hit install now that's done we're going to go ahead and import some of the demo content which is going to have all those pages we're going to hit install and wait for this to be done as well now we have it installed all we're going to do now is go here you can hit return to the wordpress dashboard it's going to take us back to our wordpress dashboard where now we're going to go ahead and edit the front page of the website so what we're going to do is we're going to go to pages all pages right here we're going to use home classic right here just go to that page hit edit right here this is how it looks like coming out of the you know the theme template whatever so this is how it looks like we're going to edit it up a little bit so it looks a lot better um, so once you hit that edit page this is like the editor of wordpress this is how we're going to be editing everything and it looks a little bit intimidating if you really haven't used it before but trust me it's really easy i'm gonna show you guys how to do it right now first thing i'm going to do is i'm actually going to leave this page um, we're going to go ahead and add the logo right here for the site so to do that we're going to go to appearance 
and we're going to go to customize. I'm just going to open this in a new tab. <clears throat> so once this loads up, we're going to do here to edit that logo. We're going to go to header and we're going to go to logo and then we're going to hit, we can remove it or select an image. So I'm just going to go ahead and upload the logo that I have for this store. That's the logo I made for this store. This is the black one. You also going to want to upload a light image as well. Light image is just the same logo, but in the white colorway instead of a black. Um, and right here, I'm going to change that sticky logo to this as well. And then that should be good. As you guys can see up here, our logo is now changed. You guys can change the size of the logo right here. I'm just going to change it to like 100. That looks good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hit publish. And then now if we go ahead here and refresh the page. The logo for the site would be changed to the one we just made it. A couple more things on while we're in this section right here. Site identity. We're going to go ahead and change this, the tagline at least. Right here, what we're going to do is we're going to go and put a space in between that. And this is A R M R. And we're going to hit publish. Also, I'm going to change the image of the site icon to the logo that I made earlier. Also, I'm going to I'm also going to change the site icon, which is like this little logo right here, to my logo of this website. So now our icon is uploaded. I'm just going to hit publish right there. I'm going to go to the home page of the site once that is done so you can see what else we need to do on that home page. Now we're going to go ahead here and we're going to edit this uh, header right here to remove a couple of things. We're going to go to header, we're going to go to header elements, and then we're going to turn off my account and we're going to turn off wish list. So it's going to take that out right there. Cool, hit publish, and now we're going to edit a couple of more things. So the next thing we're going to edit is down here where our product categories is. We're going to change these uh, prices and the names to be, uh, be like in their own line. So to do that, we're going to go to WooCommerce and then we're going to go to shops, or I'm sorry, shop catalog. And then right here on product grid layout, we're just going to hit layout one and it's going to change it so. It's like that, the low, or I'm sorry, the name of the product and the uh, price are in one line. They're not over the picture. We're also going to make it so when they hover over a product, they, it doesn't go into like that image zooming in. That's what this is, quick view. The thing we're going to do is we're going to take off show breadcrumbs and we're going to uh, take off the whole uh, sidebar in general. We're also going to take off the categories as well. Just going to take that stuff off right there. Cool. That's pretty much done. Also, what I like to do is I like to disable kind of like this whole area right here where it's going to have the header for each kind of category section of the website. Now, that is pretty much it for the uh, categories page, except one thing I do like to do actually is change it from this little bordered uh, percentage show whatever into a solid one. And then one more thing you guys are going to want to do is switch off that new label. Sometimes it'll randomly add it to products. Um, but yeah, so now we're going to do is we're going to hit publish and now all of our changes we just made is going to be published to the website. We're going to go ahead and change the footer section right here. It has a couple things we need to edit. So I'm going to take off the footer reveal effect, which is kind of like that little loading animation that happens when we were scrolling down. Um, the next thing I'm going to want to do is go down here, change this, or I'm sorry, change the name of whatever uh, your store is. Armor. That's going to change down here. Awesome, that got changed. That's it for now. We're going to come edit this stuff later once we actually make the pages for all of these. And we're also going to come edit that as well. But for now, that should be good. So now our home page is good to go. We're just going to hit publish. And now we actually have to go edit the content on here to make sure that the correct content is being shown. You guys, a little tip with WordPress. If you want to see what change you made on here, how it affects your actual website, what you can do is, for example, if you wanted to delete something, right, you wanted to say delete a section or whatever, you can delete this and then go here to preview changes. And then it'll show you what happened, like what did you do? So obviously I deleted that section. And if you like didn't want to do that, right, you could just hit this little revert button right here, hit preview changes again, and that section will be back like it never left. So that's like an easy way. Don't really ever hit update unless like you're ready to fully commit to that change. Because once you hit update, it's kind of hard to go back and remake that. If you're not really too familiar with WordPress. So, but yeah, I'm actually going to delete this because I don't want to use this on this site. So what I'm going to do is I delete that. I'm going to hit this little plus button right here. I'm going to go ahead and add a revolution slider six 
Now I'm just gonna hit X right here because I actually haven't made the slider yet, but I'm gonna go make the slider right now for you guys. So on this left-hand side right here, you see where it says slider revolution. You wanna open that in a new tab. I go ahead and make a slider. Now this is pretty simple. All you gotta do is once you hit that, um, you'll go to this section right here, the slider revolution. You're gonna to wanna to hit new blank module. This is gonna load up now. I wanna hit X right here, it doesn't really matter. So now we're on our slider. You guys can name it whatever you want, um, but I'm gonna go straight into general right now. Let's stop on hover, go to spinner. I'm gonna set my spinner as number seven. That's fine right there. And then that should be good. We're able to move on to the next section, which is right here, the full background section. This section, which is where we're gonna be adding the pictures to our slider right here. So once you select uh, you know, background, go to type image, and then go to media library. I went on Google and I found a couple of pictures like this one. So I'm gonna be using these as my uh, picture for the slider. I uploaded my image I've got. I'm gonna hit insert, let that get inserted in. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some text. So we're gonna go up here to add layer, text, quick style headline, select whatever font you guys wanna use. Oh, I added another one, that's bad, let's delete that. So this is our layer, hit the X right here. We're just gonna go to content and we're gonna say, fall 2019 collection. I'm just gonna go right here to size and then we're going to go to center and center vertically as well. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger as well. That's good. And then we're gonna go add a button as well. Right here. I will actually use one of these. Oh, well, this is good. We'll use this one. Oops. So we added that button. Go here, center this as well. Oops. Bring it down. And then just go to content and then make this. Shop, shop now. And we'll change the color of this so like an orange, since it's like a fall color. So go here, bring this down. Cool, that's good. Make the button a little bit bigger. That's good. So there is that. Oops. I mean, yeah, there we go. Okay. So we're just gonna hit save. Now what you guys want to do is you want to go up here, and then go to desktop. We're gonna have to do this again for each different device. So center that, oops, make this a little bit bigger. And we wanna center the button as well. Oops, make it a little bit bigger. And then that's good, hit save. Wanna do that for the tablet as well. So for the tablet, we'll just, well, this is fine. That's fine, yeah. Hit save. And then do it for mobile as well. For mobile, we'll make it a little bit bigger. Bring this down. A little bit bigger on mobile. Hit save. And then our slide is done. We're just gonna go back to here, to the page, edit this, and then we're gonna add our slide. Add it, to be out of the slide, we're just gonna go ahead here and preview our changes. This is how it's gonna open, it's gonna reload. And then there we go. So now, slider is now done. What we're gonna do is we're gonna just gonna go here, and now we're gonna hit update. So now the slider's done. What we're gonna do next is we're just gonna scroll down, and we're gonna remove this section right here. So how to do that is just go right down here. We're just gonna remove product categories. Oops, we're just gonna move this whole section. So that's removed, and I'll show you guys we got removed. Just preview those changes. There you go. So that got removed. Now we're just going to change this text right here. We'll just remove this from recent products. We're just going to say best sellers. Best sellers. Now we're going to preview changes. We'll close that. Best sellers. Cool. So now those are our best sellers. Now we're just gonna change this down here as well. Or we're just gonna remove that actually. So just remove that. Preview changes. Cool, so all we gotta do now is change these two sections right here. Pretty easy. This one I'm going to make it kind of like a contact us. Contact shades.com. 
there as well. And then the link. We'll, will, we'll change that later once we make the contact page. So preview that. And that's good. So we're just gonna change this now. Following us. Will be armor shades, and then change this to whatever you guys' store's Instagram is, and then that should be it. That's good. So I'm also going to change the color of this background too. How you're going to change it? I'm just going to go to that section with this little pencil right here. Go to the, uh, go to design options. I'm going to clear this, clear this, and change this color to whatever you guys want it to be. I'm going to make it sort of an orange color. So, orange, bring this down. And we're also going to have to change the text from black to white. There's a toolbar. Let's change this to white. And then change this as well to white. Oops. And preview that. There we go. So follow us on Instagram at Armor Shades. Contact us right there. Now that is all done. So our main page is done. The only thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to go here and I'm going to change uh, this collection to show all of our products. What I do is I'm just going to exit out of the recent products. I'm just going to add a section for. So I'm just going to add a product category section, and this section is going to be all products. This is fine, we'll do 12 per page. We'll make the columns four, that's fine. I'm just gonna drag this in between these two empty spaces. Preview the changes. That's good, this is gonna show all the products in that collection. That's everything, so we added everything. Now that looks good, so what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna add some of the menu items, so like the privacy policy and all that sort of thing. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go back here, update this. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to go back to all pages and then we're just going to add a new page. Essentially what you guys are going to want to do is I'm going to leave a link in the description down below with a Google Drive with all of these templates in there. So just make sure before you guys copy these into your website for those pages that you change like for example my store name to your store name. Um, and the easy way to do that is just do command F and then type in you know my the store name armor. And then just go down, you know, change the email as well, and do this for all of these pages. So once we, once you guys do that, then you just want to go to the top, and do Command A, copy this, go to your WordPress, add a new page in terms of service, and then right here, just paste that into here. So what you want to do? Is scroll back, make sure everything's cool, and then. All you guys gotta do is hit publish. So publish that, and then just view it, make sure everything is good. Okay, that is good. So now I'm just gonna do this for all of the other pages as well. Now I've published all of those, I'm just gonna exit out of all of these now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add an FAQ page. So how you guys do that is just go ahead and add a new page, title it FAQs. <clears throat> what you wanna do is you wanna select this little page builder thing right here. Hit leave. That's cool. Just make sure to change that title again. FAQs. Just go to back end editor now. Hit add element. And we're just going to go here into the search bar and type in FAQ. So now what you guys want to do is you want to get that template that I made right here. And then just the first one, copy the question, put it as the title. And then copy the content of it and then put it right here you may have to kind of fix the formatting but there you go save that now just duplicate this a couple times and then do it for the rest of the questions i'm not going to show myself doing all of them just because that's going to be a waste of time so pretty much again just paste it copy the content and put it right here so save that and then once you do it for all of them and if you guys need some more literally just duplicate it and then 
add all the questions that's how you do it i'm gonna do it for the rest of the questions and i'll catch you guys when i'm done so i've added all the faqs i'm just gonna hit publish now and it should get published oops I hit it so. <clears throat> So now the FAQ page is done. So now we're gonna add a contact page. Just go here, hit edit, and close these as well. And so this is how the contact page looks like for you guys. So you guys know what I'm doing here. Um, so we're just gonna change all this information to the right. And we're gonna do, scroll down, sorry. Just gonna scroll here. And we're just gonna remove the address. And we're also going to remove down here the telephone. And then I'm just gonna change or remove one of those spaces right there and just change this email to whatever your guys' store email is for at armorshades.com. That's good. And then that's pretty much it, guys. So one more thing I'm going to do on this page is I'm going to change this little uh, section right here to have that image. To have an image, so you're just gonna hit this little pencil button right here, design options, and then you can just select this image that we got earlier put that there and then preview the change make sure it looks good there we go and then one more thing if you want to change like the color of the logo here all you got to do is go scroll down on this page and then right here was this header elements color scheme change it to light and we'll make this logo from black to white so that's that um, and all you're gonna do now is update this page. Now we have added all of the pages. We're just gonna go ahead and add them to our menu now. So we're gonna go to appearance. We're going to go to menus. And then we're just gonna go here, select our primary menu. And I'm just gonna delete it because it comes like with all like the, um, the standard menus. So we're just gonna delete this. And then <clears throat> I'm just gonna go here, create a new menu. This is going to be my main menu. Create that. My contact. I'm going to add FAQs home. Just going to restructure this real quick. Now I have these three added. I'm also going to add my all products category so people can easily view all the products of the store. To do that, I'm just going to go to products, open the categories uh, section in a new page, and just go right here where it says all products view that and then just copy this link go back to your menu oops go to custom links paste that into there and then make this shop so then add that to your menu bring this above your FAQ and then just hit save menu you guys are also going to want to set this as the primary menu as well as the mobile menu so select that as mobile menu as well and then now we'll go over here, should refresh, and then all of our stuff should show up on the main menu. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna change all of these to the pages that we made, like those policies and FAQ and everything. So we're just gonna go here, we're gonna go to footer customer support, select that, and then we'll just delete this, we don't need this. So we're just gonna delete this one as well. And then just gonna shop highlights. So this is what we're gonna need. So we're just gonna delete these two that are in here right now. And then we're going to go down here. We're gonna to go to pages and we're gonna add all of the policies that we added earlier from those templates. Add to menu. That's good. And we're just gonna hit save menu. And if we go here, down, scroll down, all our policies are right there. And then to change this, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to menus again, make sure this is saved. We're gonna go to appearance, we're gonna go to customize. So just select this one right here, footer three column, and then that will get that out of there. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna hit publish and get that to the site, publish that. And I'm gonna exit this out. I'm gonna refresh this so we can see that got disappeared, that got removed. There we go, perfect. So now pretty much everything is done. Um, now I'm going to show you guys how to change or remove some of this stuff. So we're going to remove this, this, um, a couple more things as well, like these navigation buttons and this section right here as well. To do that, we're going to go to customize right here on that left-hand side again. Once we're here, we're going to go select one of our products and then we're going to go right here to custom code. 
first thing we're going to remove is this little section right here and i'll leave this in the document down below in the description enter that right there into the custom css section and then that little uh you know, section of the categories is gone which we go back go to woocommerce and then we're going to go to product page and now what we're going to do is we're going to remove the breadcrumbs we're just going to remove that right there and we're going to remove the product page share right here and then we're going to remove the navigate or the zoom which does this where it zooms in on the product move that we're going to remove the navigation as well which is going to remove these two buttons cool um and then one more thing we have to remove is the upsell so once that is removed we should be good we're going to hit publish publish that so that is good let's go ahead and refresh it on the main page make sure everything is gone boom so all that stuff is gone now this product page is good um, one more thing we are going to remove is the review section which we're going to have to do over here so we're going to exit out of this and then we're going to go to woocommerce here i want to go to the product section right here and then right under here where it says enable reviews you're going to uncheck that it's save changes we're going to hit refresh and then that section is now gone so pretty much the product page is ready to go now now the product page is ready to go um, we took those reviews off so that review section is now gone so pretty much the product page is good now to go now we're going to go ahead and change a couple of the store internal settings so go back to woocommerce go to the settings tab and in general add your address right here or your PO box, whatever you guys are using for your store. Um, and you want to take off the taxes and then leave that. And then just go down here and hit save changes. I'm going to go to the shipping settings now and we're going to add some shipping uh, prices as well. So now we're just going to add a zone name. We're just going to make it shipping. And then the region, you can leave that blank. And you're just going to hit add shipping method, uh, free shipping. Oh, sorry, free shipping. Add a shipping method. And then just hit edit. It's free. Track shipping and then save changes. We're gonna add a couple of more. So this is gonna be a flat rate. And then these are the ones that we're gonna make some money on. So these are essentially shipping rates that when customers go there, they're able to select them and it's gonna be a, these are gonna be priced shipping. Shipping and handling plus express processing skip the line. So this does is it gets us an extra we'll make it 495 want to make it not taxable and then we're going to add another one where it's going to be another flat rate and then this is going to be express shipping and handling plus express processing Skip both lines. It's gonna be not taxable. This one I'm gonna get eight ninety five. Oh, sorry, seven ninety five. There we go. And now refresh the page. Make sure they all saved. So that's good. That's added. Um, what you guys want to do is you're gonna to want to go to accounts and privacy. Um, remove this privacy policy page. You know, take these out because it's going to show it at the checkout screen. And then save that. And then that should be it for like the internal stuff. This is what it looks like now on the checkout page once they're at the checkout page. So it has all these options they can select, and this is how you get those extra like eight five bucks per order. Um, one thing we're going to do though is we're going to take this section out of the um, checkout page. So we're going to go back here, go here, we're going to go to appearance, customize, and then once this loads, we're going to go to, where is it, where is it, where is it? We're going to go to WooCommerce, and then we're going to go to checkout, um, and then we're just going to make this hidden, so that little section gets off, and then no page set for that privacy policy, that's good, and then take this out as well and then publish this now we're going to go ahead and add some plugins to the site so i'm going to add a top bar to the site 
So once we go on this site right here, you know, there'll be a bar up here saying like free shipping. So the one I'm going to use is this one by WP Darko. And I'll leave um, this in the link to this, uh, sorry, the link to this uh, plugin in the Google Docs description down below. You install that, just hit activate. And then once this gets activated, we're going to be able to add the text to that top bar. So there we go right over here on the left hand side select top bar it's going to say free shipping on all orders i'm going to make the color of this black save changes and i'm just going to make this active now it's save changes so we go to our site now it should show that bar up there refresh this there we go free shipping on all orders Next app that we're going to want to add is Sales Pop. So what that app does is it shows a little notification to the people viewing the site and it's going to say this item was just purchased by somebody in this location. And obviously, right, it didn't, somebody actually really purchased that item, but it adds social proof to the site. It adds, you know, again, that scarcity. So people are going to think like, oh, people are buying it. I got to buy it fast, you know. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to plugins, add new, type in Sales Pop. And again, all these plugins are going to be linked in that Google Doc description down below hit install on it activate that plugin and then we're just going to connect this we're going to add a shop and once this gets added we're going to go ahead and make our account <coughs> there we go so here we are we just got that done so what we're going to do is we're going to go here to notifications we're going to hit add a custom notification and we're just going to go to collections select that collection we made of the sunglasses and then we're going to make this a random location or i'm sorry um, the random locations just type in united states uh, you can add a couple more countries as well so united states united kingdom canada that's good so and then make sure to uncheck this or this custom notification all the random time and then hit create now so it's going to make all these notifications so when someone's on our site they'll see that someone purchased or someone in this area, wherever it is, the random generated location, purchased a, you know, Weber sunglasses. Now, one more thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go do the settings right here. And then we're going to want to go to general display settings. And let's see. So one thing that I do like to do when I'm on here is to change the display time. So I'll change it to three seconds. And then where's it? Save settings. One more thing while we're here is we're going to go to sales notifications. We're gonna go to settings and then I'm just gonna delete this right here. We're just gonna delete that, you know, nine hours ago because we just want people to think people are purchasing it at the moment. So this notification comes up, you know, they don't see that oh, it was nine hours ago, so they have time. But we can delete that. Hit save settings. Now, once we go in here, it should pop up on the bottom left corner. So let's see if it did work. Wait a couple of seconds. There we go. So someone in you know Deasley, Canada purchased a Brabus, whatever. So that's gonna go away in three or two three seconds, whatever we set it to, and then in ten more seconds, another one should pop up. So let's see if it does pop up. There we go. So that works. That set up. We're good now, so we can go ahead and save this and then exit out of there. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add another plugin. This is gonna be for reviews. So just go back to the plugins right there. Hit add new so we're, gonna, we're gonna type in reviews and then we're gonna find the one that says stars testimonials so this is the one we're gonna be using it's called uh, stars testimonials so I'll leave that in the description as well in that Google Doc I'm gonna install that and then we're gonna get that onto the site so we can start adding some reviews to build some more social proof as well now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add our first testimonial so we're gonna do that right there, hit or click here, whatever. And this is gonna be your customer's name. So the names really doesn't matter. Just make sure they all follow the format like this. So we'll just say the first name, comma, um, initial, the last name, doesn't really matter. And the way you guys are gonna get your reviews is I usually get them off of Amazon. Go ahead into Amazon, type in you know the whatever your product like name is. And then go here, try to find something like really similar with a good amount of reviews. So I found a product that's pretty similar. So we're just going to be using Amazon to get the text of the reviews. 
To get the actual pictures, we're gonna go back to AliExpress and use the pictures from the supplier's reviews. Come back to our product, go to the reviews, and then we're just going to go to photos. And then we got the photos now, so save that image, and then I'm gonna go back to here, and then I'm going to, oops, I'm gonna go to Amazon, I mean. And then I'm just gonna go and try to get only the five star reviews, so I'm gonna give a good comment. Um, so right here, copy the first couple of lines and then go back to your testimonials and then just paste that right there and make sure to read this over um, so that doesn't say anything like bad I'm just going to take this leave that last section right there add a little bit you can add some text as well and then I'm going to go here to document and we're going to get a featured image and then we're going to hit set feature image. We're just going to drag that image of the review or the product we found on AliExpress. <coughs> we're going to hit select right down here. So now the picture's uploaded. Hit select right there. The picture's right there. I'll move myself from the fucking screen. So there's that, and we're just going to hit publish, and that review is now published. So one thing you guys are going to want to do as well is for each of these testimonials, since we have, you know, multiple products are, we're going to want to, again, add different testimonial categories for each of those products because the testimonials for one product, it's, you don't want that to show up on the other product. So I went ahead and I added each different name of my product here that I have on my store into their own category. So you just type in the name, whatever, right here. You hit add a new category down here and what we're going to do is after each testimonial that we add we're just going to hit quick edit and then we're going to select whatever category that was for so the one i just added was for the brabus so i'm going to go here brabus and i'm going to hit update what i'm going to do now guys i'm going to add the rest of the testimonials i'm only going to add like two or three per product so i don't want to waste too much time on this but once those are added i'll come back with you guys and show you how to add this like or how to add the testimonials to your site so i added the reviews i put them in the categories um you guys are obviously going to want more reviews than i did usually i'll go for at least 10 products per review so for this store you know you'd have 60 ish reviews it's going to take you some time but it really does help when customers are there they're able to see that you know other people are enjoying your product and that they've also purchased it so now that we have that we're going to go to all short codes on the bottom on the left hand side under the testimonial we're going to hit create your first short code so i usually will just go with a grid i usually just go with the grid and then i'll go to choose style and hit customize for the name i'm going to make it brabus and then that should be good so then the category i'm going to put it is obviously going to be the brabus one i'm just going to go hit finish okay and now i'm going to copy this oops copy this uh short code right here and i'm going to go to my products where is it i'm gonna go to product right here all products i'm gonna go to brabus right here i'm gonna hit edit and then right here the loads now under the description right here i'm just gonna paste that short code i'm gonna preview the changes make sure it looks good scroll down there we go now what we're gonna do is i'm just gonna uh, do this real quick i'm gonna bring this down to and then above this is a customer reviews and then right here we're going to make this bold i'll actually make it like heading three so it's a little bit bigger and then that looks good and we'll just center that as well so once you guys add more um testimonials you will have obviously more testimonials to display here what we're going to do is we're going to add the short code for the other product as well and then our reviews will be set in place now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and create another short code for my other product this is going to be a grid as well customize and this is going to be for the tiolas and i'm just going to hit finish so now I have my short code. Copy that. Oops. Change that to two. And then update. 
So let's see how this looks now. Boom. All right, there we go. So that's added. So now guys, we've added the reviews to the products. And one of you guys are gonna wanna do after that is go to settings and then go to reading. And then right here, select a static page because we want our homepage to uh, be shown as the page that we were designing as a homepage. So once you do that and then you go down here, you hit save changes and you go to your home or you go, uh, type in whatever your uh, URL is, then this homepage will show up and people Google it. One thing you guys are gonna want to do is add a Facebook pixel to your guys's work. So one thing we're gonna do is add a pixel to our website. Now we're gonna be using this pixel when we're gonna be running our Facebook ads later on. So what you guys are gonna want to do is go get a Facebook pixel. So how you do this is you go to business.facebook.com, make a business manager account, and then go here to the top left, and then go to pixels. And then once you're here, you're gonna want to add a new data source, add a Facebook pixel. And then right here, name whatever your pixel or whatever your store name is. So say Armor Shades Pixel. And our website URL is right here, right there. And hit continue. Right here is we don't want no, we don't want to set up with Shopify. We want to set it up with WordPress. So we're gonna hit continue. And then we're going to download this because it's gonna give us a plugin. And we're gonna go back to WordPress, go to plugins, add new. And we're gonna go to upload that plugin. <clears throat> then we're gonna drag it right there, hit install. And we're going to activate that. So we upload that plugin, we're gonna go hit continue, continue. <clears throat> Jesus, <laughs> my voice is cracking. Continue again, continue. We're gonna add our URL there. It's gonna send like some test traffic. So it's gonna make sure that that pixel is installed correctly. Let me move this. And one way you guys can know it's installed correctly is by downloading the Facebook Pixel Helper. And then this should be green now that we added a pixel. And then, yep, it says it's active. So that's good. So just hit continue and then close. So now we have a pixel on our site. That's good. We're able to track all the metrics from people coming on our site. So we're going to add a payment gateway. So just type in Stripe right here and then get the WooCommerce Stripe payment gateway. Uh, install that and then activate it as well. Now we're going to do we go to WooCommerce, go to settings. We're going to go to payments, go to settings, and go to payments. Once you get onto the settings page, you're just going to go uh, sign up for a Stripe account if you guys don't have one. And if you do, you can just go here, click this link, and it'll take you into your um, your Stripe account, and it'll give you these keys. You'll copy these keys right now, and you're gonna put them right here into them into their respect respective sections. Once you've added those two keys, what you're going to want to do now is go here to your Stripe settings, and then open up a um, the webhook section, add an endpoint, and then you're just gonna go here and copy past the HTTP, HTTP, whatever, and then add, receive all events and then add that endpoint. And once you've added it, go here, click on it, and then you re you have to reveal the, um, the signing secret. Take that and then put it into the secret thing right here. And then make sure this is enabled as well. You can just take Stripe off, you don't wanna have that. All right, so once you guys install Stripe, we now have to install an SSL on our site to make the site secure and compliant with Stripe so we can go ahead and process payments. So I made a little guide for you guys right down here. Um, in the description down below, it'll be a Google Docs in that Google Drive and we'll have this little tutorial there. And at the top, as you guys can see, I'm telling you guys that there is a live chat for Namecheap. They'll pretty much help you A to Z how to set up this SSL. It'll probably take like about an hour to talk with them. So if you guys don't want to do that, you want to go ahead and try it yourself. I made a little, uh, again, little guide right here. I try to include as many pictures as I could and I try to be as clear as possible. But like say you're stuck on like step 15, you know, go ahead and go to the live chat right here. And quickly how you guys can do that is just open that link and then scroll down here, go to live chat support. And then right here, just go here, hit SSL support, type in your name, Type your name cheap email um, put your question right there you know whatever question you have then hit you know check that and then hit start chat and they may ask you for your pin 
and then they'll tell you how to get that pin as well. To install your SSL, you're going to want to install one more plugin. It's right here. It's called Really Simple SSL. Um, I'll show you guys right here. This is the plugin. So you have to already finish this whole process, you know, um, all these steps before you can go ahead and install that, or else it really won't work. So. Again, guys, if you have questions, please go to the Nametube live chat. They literally have a whole team dedicated to helping you guys 24-7. So go ahead and ask them any questions. And once you guys, you know, finish installing your SSL certificate and key, go here, install this, and then activate it. And then your site will be completely ready to process payments and start getting orders on your guys' store. That is pretty much it. So now your guys' WordPress store is now completely built. Um, you're ready to go ahead and start processing orders. And I'll even show you guys now. So we'll go ahead and try to add one of these products from the store we just made to our cart. Go ahead to the checkout screen right now. And then, you know, you can enter your billing information. Shipping information is right there. We're able to select different options. And then down here is the credit card section. So now go ahead and enter the credit cards, place an order successfully, and your store is ready to go, guys. So I hope you guys did enjoy this video. Again, there is going to be that Google Drive link in the description down below with all the plugins, all those templates for those policy pages, as well as this document right here for the SSL help as well will be in there. Maybe even a couple of other things that I mentioned in the video will all be in there. So guys, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. It literally took me seven hours to make in total. Um, I really do hope that you guys are gonna use this. Go ahead and make your stores on WordPress because it really is a better platform than, you know, Shopify. Anyways, guys, I hope you did enjoy the video. Please, if you could, support me by dropping a like on the video down below, subscribing to the channel if you guys are new, and again, join my Discord chat if you guys are interested in getting some help on e-commerce. It is a free chat. I'm even there to answer some of your guys' questions as well, so that really would mean a lot to me if you guys could go ahead and join that. But anyways, guys, that is going to be it for the video. Again, like the video, subscribe. Hope you did enjoy, and I'll see you guys in the next video.